Hello everyone, welcome to What If Deku Has the Ability of Blacklight Virus Prototype Part 6. Before we start please go support Dummy wearing a hoodie for writing that awesome fanfic. Now let's begin. Chapter 18. Creating Comfort. Man I lost without me knowing it, Denki Kaminari exclaimed in indignation as he slumped his shoulders as he sat down on his chair. He had fraud against Itachi Shinso and thought that it would be an easy win for him. How did I even lost he asked himself as Kirishima pats his shoulder, trying to comfort the electrification user. Izuku looked at Shinso who just looked away, feeling bad for the blonde boy. Both of them couldn't help but snicker at how easy it had been to make Kaminari respond to the sleep-deprived teen. Flashback. As midnight starts the match, Kaminari began covering his body with electricity. As he was about to release the attack the sleep-deprived boy, said boy said something. Idiot says what? He quickly said. Making the boy look at him in confusion. Wah and everything went blank. Shinso smirked, walk off the ring. Saying that, making Denki turn around and walking off the platform. As he exits the ring, Midnight's voice echoed in the arena, knocking the brainwashed boy out of his daze. Kaminari is out of bounds. Shinso wins. The crowd was confused of what happened but cheered eventually. Kaminari was in a mix of shock and confusion. Flashback ends. Aoi Rozu is out of bounds, Tokoyami advances to the next round Midnight's voice echoed in the arena, making Izuku snap out of his trance and turn to look at the arena. Momo just stood there looking shocked and disappointment. She faced off against Fumikage Tokoyami and lost to the avian boy. He had used Dark Shadow to force Momo to go out of bounds before she could even counter his attacks. Without a word, she looked down and slowly walked towards the exit of the arena. Izuku couldn't help but look at the Ravenette's back. There were a number of feelings that was very familiar with him. Defeat, sadness, frustration, and hopelessness just for starters. All of this which he became well acquainted with at the young age of four. Growing up quirkless in this world made that inevitable and inescapable. Though after meeting Alex Mercer, those feelings were nothing but fragments of his past self. After inheriting the blacklight virus now turned quirk, the feeling of defeat and disappointment was washed up by the fact that he had grew in just a short period of time. He looked back at the exit of the arena and saw that the next contestants are up next. The Steelix ripoff, Tetsutetsu Tetsutetsu from Class 1B and the Diplosion Prima Project, Kitsuki Bakugo. Jokingly thinking that Bakugo will win because he had a type advantage. Izuku then looked around the seats and saw that Tokoyami had returned, but no sign of Momo. And for some reason, it worried him. The green-haired boy knew well that they rarely talk and only talked when it comes to academics and hero studies. But his heroic nature couldn't bear to see the look on her face he couldn't just sit there and do nothing. He stood up, making Achako and Iida who was sitting next to him look at him in confusion. You okay, Izuku? The gravity girl asked as she looked at Izuku as he walks away, but took a look back to her direction. My match is after this, I need to prepare. Izuku lied as he smiled sheepishly before continuing, I'll watch it in the prep room. Izuku already knew who the winner of the match is. So it didn't really matter if he watches or not. The Chako and Iida just nod at the blacklight user. That makes sense. Good luck on your match later, Midoriya. Iida said as he fixed his glasses. Yeah good luck, Izuku she said as she waved her hand at him. Izuku nodded before running off the bleachers. Seeing Izuku nowhere to be seen, the girls, Mina, Toru and Tsai, began to surround Ichako, making her back off a bit and Iida getting pushed off his seat. Tsuo, how did it feel? Mina asked her while looking at her with a teasing look, but a jealous tone can be verified in the Pinkett's voice. The question confused Ichako, making her furrow her eyebrows. What do you mean, how did it feel? She asked the Pinkett. What else? Izuku's shoulder Toru exclaimed, not hiding her jealousy as she flailed her arms in an energetic gesture. Ichako was still confused. What does Izuku's shoulder have to do with th that thought was overtaken as the memory of her leaning onto Izuku as he hugs him protectively enter her mind. Making the gravity girl blush a storm as she recall how close Izuku was and how she felt safe and comfortable in the greenet's arms. And how she almost unconsciously purred when Izuku began stroking her brown bob cut hair. The girl's left eye twitched in annoyance at Ichako's reaction but didn't say a word as they look at the zero gravity user in a scrutinizing way. Ichako began unconsciously touching her index fingers together as she stuttered a response. W well, it f felt warm and soft. It felt like I was leaning over a large s soft pillow. I almost fell asleep on his shoulder. She paused before smiling a bit when he wrapped his arm over me and h hugged me, I felt safe and protected. Izuku made me feel that he was there for me and he was afraid to lose me. She said as she remembered the large iceberg that almost stabbed her in the head and how Izuku pulled her clothes as he shielded her from the ice pillar. Ichako suddenly covered her face with her hands, with her pinkies up to avoid an accidental activation of her quirk and making herself float out of the atmosphere of the earth as she began to squeal in excitement and glee. 
Her squeal made the trio and Kayo Kajiro, who was absolutely not eavesdropping at the conversation, look at her with raised eyebrows. Well, if you describe it that way. I now want to lean over Izuku's shoulder. Kiro she said bluntly as a tint of a pink blush can be visible on her cheeks. Mina, Toru and Jiro, who still wasn't eavesdropping nodded in agreement as they all imagined themselves leaning against our protagonist's shoulder and squealing internally. As class 1A girls look like weirdos in front of their other classmates in the stands, Izuku had made it to the entrance point to the arena. But, Momo was nowhere to be found. He started to wander the halls, hoping she didn't leave the stadium grounds altogether. Where is she? I can't find her. Izuku said as he looked around, searching for the ravenette. Sniff, looking to his left, around the corner was the rich girl herself. Sitting against the wall of a deserted hallway, a hand over her mouth to stifle her sobs, tears flowing down her face, was Yayoi Rozumomo. This was where the blacklight user stopped dead in his tracks. I'm so useless. He heard her say between sobs, I shouldn't have choose this course in the first place. Being a hero is not for me. It broke his heart seeing her like this he couldn't even handle when his own mother cry, and he is now witnessing one of his female classmates crying in distress and in a verge of giving up. Izuku took a deep breath before taking a step closer to the creation user. Momo he called out, easily making the girl jump in shock and looked at him. Her eyes widened in shock, believing that no one would come down this unused hallway. She was even shocked to see not Jiro, not Yuraka, or any of the girls of class 1A to show up. But Izuku to come at her. The green-haired boy stopped next to her and sat down, further confusing the ravenette. He just sat there in silence as Momo just stared at him. Just as she was about to ask him what he was doing her, Izuku talked first. It hurts, doesn't it? He said, making the girl next to him look at him in confusion. It hurts to lose, right? Momo looked away after Izuku said that. And tears began to gather on her eyes when he continued. I understand how you're feeling right now, Izuku was about to continue when Momo snapped at him. How how would you get what I'm feeling right now you won your match while I lost you made your match look easy, while I didn't even get a chance to think of a counterattack. how can you say that you understand how I feel, when you don't have any idea of how I feel, she yelled at the boy who just looked down, deep in thought. She then saw him sigh and looked at his palm. He was quiet for a bit before he started talking. I don't know if I already told you were class this, but for 10 of my life I didn't have a quirk. That made Momo's eyes widen. She didn't get a chance to ask him what he meant when he continued. I always wanted to be a hero. I always wanted to help and save people with a smile on my face, like All Might. But being quirkless made it seem impossible. He paused and clenched his fist. Because of that dream, I was bullied, beaten, made fun at and called names. Heck, I was even told to kill myself to get a quirk in my next life which I did. He whispered the last line, but the girl next to him heard it. Momo's face showed so many different emotions, but the most notably is shock. Izuku. You felt all that. That's when I unlocked my quirk. After that I did everything I can to be the best version of myself. He looked at Momo who had stopped crying and was looking at him. He smiled softly, making the girl blush a little which made him chuckle. I think what I'm saying is, I didn't let my past or mistakes take the best of me. Instead, I worked hard to improve and become the hero I always wanted to be. He then stood up and looked down at the ravenette. If I can do it, you can too. This is just the first sports festival, and your loss only implies that you still have room for improvement and potential to become the best hero you want to be. After all, you are the one who beat me in the quirk apprehension test. He paused and reached out his hand to the girl which he took and let him pull her up. Seeing her stand up on her own, he smiled. And you're the person who can summon a literal cannon. You hear me? A freaking. Cannon. He said while making exaggerated movements which made the girl giggle at his silly display of goofiness. That made him smile wider. Not to mention you're smart and beautiful. He thought to himself but quickly clasped his mouth when he saw her blush a storm. He was about to talk again when Momo hugged him. Izuku blushed as he felt a soft warm mass touch and got squished on his chest while her arms were wrapped around his neck. Thank you. She said, slightly muffled as her face was placed on the crook of his neck. This made him blush even more and had to stop a shiver when he felt her warm breathe touch his skin. Trying to calm himself as images from the grapist's memories entered his mind, he mentally slapped himself. You're welcome Momo. He said as he slowly hugged the taller girl back. Momo then let go of the hug, but her arms are still on his neck. She looked at Izuku who was still blushing. Her eyes black her eyes were caught by his greens and made her blush. As they looked at each other's eyes, their vision then looked down at the other's lips and back to the other's eyes. They failed to notice their faces getting closer to each other until they were only inches away from each other. Momo slowly closed her eyes and leaned forward, and Izuku mirrored her action. Their lips slowly began to move closer. And closer. And closer. And close. Will Izuku Midoriya and Ibarashi Aizaki come to the arena, please? 
present Mick's voice echoed making the two teens pause and open their eyes. They noticed that they were only an inch away from each other, and they scrambled away from each other, blushes intensifying. OMG I almost kissed him her they thought simultaneously as they look away from each other. Izuku then remembered that his name was called and was about to walk towards the entrance when a hand grabbed the sleeve of his PE uniform, for some reason made his heart skip a beat. He looked the direction of Momo, who was still blushing slightly, smiled at him. Izuku smiled back at her but was caught off guard when she pulled him close and kissing him on the cheek. He touched his cheek and looked at the raven-haired girl, who looked at him and smiled while blushing. That's for good luck I'll be rooting for you. Win your fight, okay? She said as she turned and walked to the rest of the class, slightly swinging her hips. Yes ma'am. He said quietly as a goofy grin crept on his face. He then shook his head and turned to the entrance of the arena. He still has a match to win. As present Mick announced the next fighters, Izuku looked back at the crowd and saw that Momo was there sitting next to Jiro. Izuku noticed her look at him and gave him a thumbs up and smiled. He blushed and nodded at the girl's direction and looked back at her opponent, not seeing the jealous looks of the other girls in her class and his sister class 1B. Our green-haired protagonist stared at Shiazaki, who had her hands in a praying position with her eyes closed. Before midnight starts the match, Izuku spoke up. I wish you good luck, Shiazaki. Let's give it out all. He said giving a small smile at the Vine user. Said girl, opened her eyes and looked at him and smiled back. I also wish you good luck, Midoriya. Midnight looked at the competitors and asked if they are both ready, getting nods from the two. Well then, the first match of the quarterfinal. Start with a sound of whiplash echoing in the arena, Izuku ran forward to Ibarra, who had her vines quickly slitter towards him. As the vines were about to touch Izuku, his right arm turned into his blade and swiftly cut the incoming vines. The action shocked Ibarra, but she didn't let it show and sent another wave towards Izuku. Seeing another volley of vines coming at his way, Izuku began slicing and tearing with his blade as he moved closer to the vine girl, who was having trouble keeping calm as the boy kept on cutting the vines she launched at him. In a desperate move, Shiazaki tried to cover herself with her vines, only to see Izuku who was in front of her vanish. She was about to look around when she felt her hair vines fall off to the ground as a cold, sharp object touched her neck and a strong arm hugging here from behind. Ibarra looked down and saw Izuku's blade and arm around her. Yield. A low tone said on her ear. She quickly recognized it as Izuku and hearing it made her shiver. I give up. She said. The blade on her neck transformed into a normal arm and it let go of her as Midnight announces. Shiazaki yielded. Midoriya advances to the semi-finals the heroine said, earning a roar of cheers from the crowd. The girls of 1A also cheered for loudly at the green-haired boy's victory. Izuku walked in front of her and reached out his right hand for a handshake. That was a good match, Shiazaki. He said as he smiled at the girl. The girl looked at the hand and then at the boy. She smiled and took his hand to shake it. Good match. You have come victorious over me. I must admit that you are the better competitor. She frowned a bit and looked down. Izuku took back his hand and looked at her. He then shook his head. Don't sell yourself short, Shiazaki. You did great. He said to the religious girl, but seeing that she is still down, he thought of something and said it. If it makes you feel better. You look good with your hair cut short. He said. That made the vine user look up to him and slowly moved her hand to her hair. Air. Vines. Her eyes went wide when she felt her vines were cut short. She blushed the compliment just registered in her brain. T thank you Midoriya. She said touching her hair vines. Izuku gave her a smile and began to turn away, well, I need to go and rest for my next match. See you around. He said. Good luck with your other match. Shiazaki said to the boy who gave her one last smile before he walked away leaving her to turn away the other entrance. She smiled softly as she touched her now short hair vines as she remembered his compliment. Suddenly, the memory of Izuku with his arm hugging him came into her mind and how warm he felt while he was holding him. It made her blush as she exited the arena. She stopped to a corner as she placed her hands in a praying pose. Lord, forgive me for I have sinned she said as she placed her hand on her chest, feeling her heartbeat rapidly pulsing as she remembered the greenette's touch and voice. But that was so hot. At the other end of the exit, Izuku was walking in the hallways of the stadium as he took a bite out of the protein bars he had in his pockets. He was proud of himself about winning against Shiazaki without hurting the vine user. Izuku didn't really like to hurt his classmates and schoolmates, with the exception of the grape-headed pervert, the blonde psychopath from 1B, and the angry Pomeranian they call Kitsuki Bakugo. So he will try to fight and win without hurting them too hard or try not to hurt anyone if possible. He was cut off his trance when a booming voice called out to him from behind. There you are. I have been looking everywhere for you, boy. The voice said, making Izuku stop on his tracks and look at the owner of the voice. He was shocked and surprised to see who the owner of the voice is. Endeavor. Chapter 19. 
protect your power. In the middle of the hallway, Izuku stared at the number two hero himself, Endeavor. The greenet began to wonder why the man had been seeking his presence. Uh. What can I do for you, Mr. Endeavor? Izuku asked as politely as possible. Not really a fan of the pro hero's methods of arrest. And if Shoto was telling the truth, then this man is not a great father husband. Said man didn't answer and just looked at him from head to toe, whilst walking circles around him. While the man keep his scrutinizing eyes at the boy, Izuku began to grow uncomfortable and annoyed at the man. As he was about to talk, Endeavor beat him to it. Hmm. You're the one, boy. He said nodding to himself, making Izuku look at him with confusion. Pardon? Izuku asked, clearly confused. You're the one. You're the perfect test for my son. The flaming man said. And as Izuku was about to talk, he continued. Though your quirk is nothing like All Might's, but that is not a problem. You will be the best tool for him to push past his limits, give him the fight of his life, and get him to use his gifted flames. And he will surpass that bastard All Might and you will be the tool to make that happen. Do you understand? Before Izuku could respond, Endeavor huffed and turned and walked away from the boy. Izuku was annoyed by this, and his eye twitching can justify it. The audacity of him to talk to him, tell him what to do and turn away from him. He will not let that slide, number two hero be damned. But before he could do an irrational decision, a thought entered his mind. He grinned at the thought and looked at the retreating form of the man. You know, it's rude to walk away from someone before they could talk back. He said calmly as he looked at the man, who stopped and looked at the him. I know you and Todoroki don't have the best relationship as father and son, but come on don't drag me in your family problem. If you want him to surpass All Might, then make him fight him one on one. He saw the man glare at him, and Izuku just inwardly smirked at the man. But you're right, he needs to stop holding back and using half of his quirk. It's disrespectful to everyone in the sports festival who are giving their all to show their skills, me included. I'll make him use his fire in our match he paused and could see Endeavor perk up. He smirked and turned away from the man. Though that would be such a waste of energy, since he won't be able to beat me even with his fire. As he took a step he felt the temperature of the hallway grew higher and made him look at the man. You speak blasphemy, child the man yelled at Izuku. There he saw Endeavor become a literal human torch and was gritting his teeth as he glared daggers at him. Izuku just looked at the man with a dead pan and sighed. He activated Mr. Azawa's quirk and erased the unnecessary bone fire before the sprinklers activated. The fire in the number two hero's body was put out, but the teeth-breaking grit was still there. Izuku blinked the activating erasure and looked at the sneering pro hero. Looking at the man with a curious look. Huh. You should keep your fire away from your face, Endeavor. That fire mustache you wear looks ridiculous. He said blankly. Endeavor snatched the boy's collar and pulled him closer. He has veins appearing in his you want to say that again, brat from the tone of his voice, Izuku can't tell that he hit a nerve there. Izuku didn't even flinch in the volume of the man's voice, what? You got offended by that. You can't take a simple joke. No wonder you're only number two. As he said that the man raised his arm and curled it at into a fist. Before the man could do anything to assault the boy, Izuku stopped him. I won't do that if I were you. He said and glanced at a certain direction, Endeavor shortly after followed the direction where Izuku is looking at. The flame hero's eyes grew a large proportion when he saw a security camera pointing at their direction and with the red lead light glowing, indicating it was on. He was being watched, the talk, him losing cool and him almost hitting a student just for calling his fire mustache ridiculous an. Well, it is ridiculous. Dot slowly he let go of the boy while still looking at the camera. As Izuku was released, he fixed his PE uniform and placed his hands in his pockets. Well that stopped you. He said as he walked away. You know what, Endeavor. You have the potential to surpass All Might, but you need to find out what that potential is, instead of making your son do it for you. Last time I check you're still a human. Like me, like Shoto and like All Might. But don't worry. I'll make sure he uses his left side. He stopped walking and turned back to Endeavor, because if he doesn't, he'll lose his right limbs. He said as he channeled black light on his eyes, making his pupils turn crimson and sclera pitch black just to prove a point. He turned away while turning off his quirk and began walking away. As he was about to turn a corner, he looked back at the man and said, oh and use a tic-tac for God's sake cause your breath stinks, in an alleyway in Hosu City. This is the Hosu Police Department we need back up immediately, a man said from a phone that is left with blood stains, as the owner of the device groans in pain. The owner can be seen near the phone. An armored clad man with the letters ing printed on his left shoulder, lay bloodied in the concrete ground, severely injured as a tall figure towered over him, looking at the damage he had dealt to the man on the ground. Pay money. No matter where you look, they've got the nerve to go by the name of heroes. An eerie voice said as he took as he chuckled darkly. Not one of you bastards is a damn hero. The figure then walking away from the body as he continued to talk. Only he is the only one who's allowed to do me in. Ha. 
He breathed heavily as he licked off the blood on his blade with a sinister grin. As all might. Akinue Arena. After a series of matches, some quick, brutal, harmless and amazing, we see our green-haired protagonist, Izuku Midoriya in the arena, walking to the arena and on the opposite side, Shoto Todoroki, who had beaten Tenya Iida in the tenth match. Todoroki had his eyes glued on Izuku, who had his eyes closed while his hands are in his pockets. The two boys stayed that way as present Mick announced the combatants. For the first match of the semi-finals the boy who literally had frozen all of the students in his way and almost catching the 10 mil headband from the cavalry battle. From the hero course, the ice prince of class 1A, give it up for Shoto Todoroki. And on the other side, the boy who literally made a banger in the obstacle race and outsmarted everyone in the cavalry battle, earning him and his team first place on both rounds. From the hero course, master strategist of class 1A and my pick to win the whole sports festival. Give it up for Izuku Midoriya. Torches igniting, crowd cheering, students and heroes watching as the two combatants stopped inside the ring of the stadium, few feet away from each other. Itsuki Bakugo looked at his two rival, well self-proclaimed rivals, before he walked away to the waiting area to prepare for his match against our resident brainwasher, Hitashi Shinso. Everyone in the crowd were looking intently at the duo and began talking to each other. Trying to guess who would win the match. Some say that Todoroki will win because he was Endeavor's son, and some say Midoriya because he won both the obstacle race and cavalry battle. In the crowd with Class 1A, the class began to debate on who would win. Iida, who do you think will win? Achako Yuraka asked to her friend who quickly began thinking. I'd want to say Todoroki, but seeing how Midoriya outsmarted everyone in the cavalry battle and manhandled Mineta in the first round. I think the victor will be Midoriya. He said earning a nod from most of the class. I don't know. Todoroki hasn't been touched yet, even you Iida. And you're the fastest in the class. Kirishima said looking at the tall boy. I'm with Kirishima here. Did you see him easily beat Hanta early Ao Kaminari yelped as a hand landed on his temple. The callback was not necessary, Kaminari. Siro said with a tick mark on his forehead, really not liking the way his lost was brought up. As the two argue, Momo looked at the two boys in the arena. She began thinking all the possibilities and the possible scenarios. In every scenario, she saw the same outcome. It's Izuku's win. She said out of the blue, making the class look at him. Todoroki may have easily beaten both Iida and Siro, but let's not forget the fact that Izuku also defeated his opponents with minimal effort, and he is yet to show all of his skills. Damn Omo's right Izuku hasn't showed us everything that he got. Toru said with both Mina and Achako agreeing. Also isn't he the one who defeated the Nomu back in USJ? Ribbit. Sayu asked with her index finger on her chin. That's what the teachers said, but seeing the brawler he summoned earlier I'll say he did. Kayoka Jiro joined the conversation. Every male student minus Izuku, Kitsuki and Shoto looked at the girls as they converse on a conversation about Izuku and saw the blushes on their face. The boys deadpanned as they began to think simultaneously, simps. As class 1A were conversing, they failed to notice a floating air near them. The air began floating to the other side of the seats, attaching back to its owner, Satsuna Tokage. So? What did those 1A brats said about themselves? Monoma said, still tied up in the Izuku's tendrils. She looked at her annoying classmate. They were just debating who would win in the next match. Satsuna said making the whole class look at her with interest. Who care about who will be the winner? Class 1B will always be superior Ki was cut off as a chop landed on his neck, knocking him unconscious. Itsuka sighed and looked at Satsuna, who did they think will win? This question made the class even more interested. Some say it's Todoroki, but most of them said Midoriya will win since he defeated the Nomu in USJ. She said as she thought about it for a second and continued, and now that I think about it, I think Midoriya will be the winner. Why yeah, IT think Midoriya will win this one. H he's smart and was the one who M made the plan for us to escape and defeat the villain in USJ. Kinoko stuttered out, earning a nod from Nurinjeki, Ibarra and Itsuka. He outsmarted everyone in the cavalry battle, thinking ahead of all of us when he used his quirk to hide the headband in his head. Slightly unsettling but smart. A black-skinned boy, Shihai Kawaro said. Says the person who can literally enter one person's shadow. Said Kasate Tsuburaba in a deadpan tone. A tick mark appeared on the black user. The call out was not necessary, Air Heady growled at the solid air user. What did you call me Kasei growled back as they butted heads, making everyone in their class minus an unconscious Monomasai. As the crowd diverse in conversations and debates on who will win, Izuku just stood there with his eyes still closed. I'd suggest that you use both your sides this round, Todoroki. Izuku said making the dual-haired boy look at him intently. And why is that? Todoroki asked as he narrowed his eyes to the greenette. The heterochromia-eyed boy saw Izuku's face slowly form a small smirk before he opened his eyes. Because you'll need both of them to survive. Izuku said in an eerie voice sending shivers to every single person in the arena, even Endeavor. Snapping out of his trance, Todoroki just huffed. 
we'll see about that. After getting looking at the boys, Midnight walked to his podium and began the match, are both competitors ready? Seeing both nod, Midnight whipped the air. And as soon as she done that ice from Shoto appeared and quickly making its move to Izuku. Todoroki looked bored and wanted to end this as quickly as possible, but as the ice was meters away from Izuku, it stopped. It was erased. As soon as the ice stopped, Izuku ran toward the Todoroki with his arm turning into Musclamus. Todoroki tried to summon another wave of ice, but to no able as Izuku was staring at him, eyes glowing a red glint. Shoto couldn't do anything but tried, tried to dodge a punch on his stomach. Sending him tumbling backward, so strong that he almost fall off the ring. If it weren't for the last second ice wall. Half hot, half cold coming in clutch. But his relief was quickly gone as a tendril wrapped on his right side and was pulled toward the center of the ring, meeting a round hose kick at the side of the face. Sending him to the side. Landing on his feet, he began to summon another wave of ice, only this time nothing came out. Damn it, he erased it again. Really? You tried and failed before. What makes you think it'll work this time? Izuku said as he ran toward the boy and sent a musclamous enhanced haymaker on his face. Todoroki dodged albeit barely and froze his outstretched arm. Izuku raised an eyebrow, but shrugged it off as he used his frozen arm to punch his opponent. As soon as it hit, Todoroki regretted freezing it. He tumbled back as he fell down his knees, clutching his bruised cheek. That felt like I was hit by a frozen meat. He shook off his thoughts and sent another wave towards the green-haired boy. This one was faster than the previous ones. But even with speed, it just stopped not even a meter away from him. For someone who is supposed to be from the recommendations you sure are a one-trick pony. Izuku said in a bored tone. Hair floating as erasure activated. Big talk for someone with frozen limbs. Todoroki grunted as he shakily stood up, almost falling down because of the pain. Izuku just looked at his frozen arm and shrugged as he turned it into hammer fists, breaking the ice surrounding it and freeing himself. You were saying. He said earning a jaw drop from the ice user. With only your ice you can't beat me, Todoroki. Why don't you the other half of your quirk? Your fire. Izuku emphasizes the fire to make the heterochromia-eyed boy do it, but just received a sneer of hate. So that's how it is. My dad arranged this, didn't he? He asked as he glared at Izuku. I will never use his fire, it's your fire, Todoroki. You're the one who manifested it. You're the one who would use it not him, not your dad, not Endeavor. Izuku said calmly but inside is losing patience. I will never use his power Todoroki yelled at Izuku who just looked down. Not waiting for a response, he sent a wave of ice to the blacklight user. This time, successfully encasing him. Everyone was shocked at this. After a solid five seconds midnight began to talk, albeit hesitantly. M. Midoriya is immobilized. Todoroki was cut off when she heard a thump coming from the iceberg. They all witnessed as the ice released loud thumping sounds. Thump, 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 and silence. Crash. The top of the ice shattered with a loud crash as a green and red blur sprung out the ice. Everyone looked at the arena as Izuku landed on a crouching position. His head was down, but Todoroki could see the calm yet terrifying expression that their class rep is wearing. If you're not going to use your left side, Izuku said pausing as red and black tendrils covered his left arm until it turned into his blade. Then I'll be taking it off you. Izuku said as he slowly stood up, looked at Todoroki with a blank expression which sent chill to everyone watching him. Not waiting for Izuku to move he sent a wave of ice to the class rep, only for it to be sliced cleanly in half, diagonally. His eyes widened as Izuku began sprinting towards him, while releasing red liquid out of his body. Whatever that red liquid is, it is helping him move faster, and it scared him. He was about to use his quirk when Izuku suddenly disappeared and reappeared on his left side. He saw Izuku raise his bladed hand in a slicing motion. Shoto panicked and moved backward, barely dodging the slash as Izuku slashed a small cut on his shoulder. The cut was small, but it was bleeding. He looked back at Izuku and saw the blood on the greenette's blade was absorbed with the help of red and black tendrils. He noticed Izuku halted to a stop and looked thoughtful, before nodding to himself. I'm interesting. Izuku whispered as he retracted his blade and looked at Todoroki. He noticed that the boy was shivering and covered with small ice patches. You're shivering, Todoroki. Looks like you're at your limit. He paused for a bit before talking once again. You're shivering and bleeding, but couldn't land a hit on me, and that last one was a free hit. You should give up now. Not only in this match but also in the hero course. That made the crowd gasp in shock at the boy's words, but Izuku just ignored it and continued. You saw what happened in USJ. Villains attacked us and didn't hold back. Do you really think your ice will be enough to fight against villains and save people at the same time? Todoroki didn't answer so Izuku continued. Just because you don't have the best relationship with Endeavor, that doesn't mean that you can just use half of your power. Izuku then pointed at the crowd. 
Shin So from General Studies, he's doing his best to make it into the hero course, Mei from the support course, sacrificed her chance to win, just to show Japan her great inventions, and Achako, she wanted to win the sports festival to support her parents and give them a better life. Every person mentioned were shocked, surprised and moved by Izuku's speech. We all came to UA with one goal in mind. To become heroes in our own way. But to do that, we need to use our full strength to do it. He paused and looked at the young Todoroki. So what's it going to be? Will you shelter yourself in grief and half-ass out of spite, or will you use your power to become the hero you always wanted to be? At that time after Izuku said that, Todoroki heard a voice in his head. But you still want to be a hero, right? Todoroki can hear a calm yet sweet voice that he recognized clearly. Mom. It's okay, Shoto. You you aren't a slave to your blood. You can become the man you want to be. At that moment inside the ring, Todoroki was caught ablaze. The temperature in the whole stadium quickly rised from zero to a blazing fifty. Everyone had to cover their eyes on how bright the fire was. All the eyes melted in a blink of an eye. I'm gonna be a hero. Todoroki said as he smiled at Izuku. Izuku stared at the size and brightness of the blazing flame that Todoroki was releasing. He couldn't help but smiled at this. Somewhere in Mistafu, Japan, in a traditional Japanese house, sitting in front of the television was young woman with turquoise eyes, white shoulder-length hair with fleck traces or crimson-like color, ear-length side bangs and a short clump she left hanging down her forehead. She was looking at the match via television and was crying tears of joys as she looks at her baby brother finally accepting himself. Her eyes then moved to the green-haired boy and smiled. Thank you for saving Shodo, Midoriya. Back in the arena, Chuatu Endeavor's booming voice echoed in the arena, making everyone look at him as he descended the stairs. So you've finally accepted yourself, have you good excellent now this is your true beginning. You who holds my blood, surpass me and realize my ambition in yourself, he said as he gripped the railings looking at his masterpiece, expecting Shoto to look at him. But Shoto didn't even acknowledge his presence as he was smiling directly at Izuku, who mirroring his expression. What are you smiling about? Shoto asked as he was shaking in excitement. Izuku smirked at the ice fire user. Nothing. I'm just happy that you fully accepted yourself. Izuku paused and began channeling black light on his arms as red and black tendrils circle its way on his limbs. And because of that I don't need to hold back anymore. You're absolutely nuts. But whatever I don't care he said as he leveled Izuku's smirk. After that he and Izuku slightly crouched their bodies as they expelled their quirks. Fire and ice on Todoroki's sides while red and black tendrils cover Izuku's arms. Seeing the two boys will unleash their strongest attacks, Cementus stood up his chair and crouched down. Midnight he said as he touched the ground and a wave of cement suddenly sped toward the center of the ring, trying to make a wall to prevent the strong attack. At that same moment, Midnight ripped off a part of her costume as a pink mist began to cover the ring. The stadium explodes as Todoroki's fire and ice combination and Izuku's massive attack made contact with a walk of cement that had made its way to the center. A strong gust of wind enveloped the stadium, everyone covered their eyes to protect themselves of the strong force. As the force seized, smoke covered all whole center stadium. The crowd began to squint their eyes as they tried to see who won the massive impact. As the smoke slowly clears they saw a figure laying outside the ringside area. The smoke began to disappear and they all widened their eyes on what they saw. Midnight steadied herself from the shockwave and looked at the ring. She looked at the direction where the rest of the crowd were looking and saw it, and looked at the opposite direction, and saw the other person there standing straight with his quirk protecting him. She nodded and announced. Todoroki is out of bounds Midoriya advances to the finals. There was a subtle short silence until the crowd erupted in cheers. Izuku stood there in the middle of the ring, covered in his shield, which had protected himself from the massive shockwave, with the help of the aspects of the grape shit's quirk, helping him stay in place as the four surged. He had activated the shield at the last second as he reached the center and stuck himself on the ground. He deactivated his quirk and began panting like an asthmatic. He had used too much biomass this time, and being tired is an understatement. Izuku looked at the direction of Shoto and saw that he was now getting carried by the medic robots. He smiled at the boy as he now accepted himself and inwardly apologized for the damage he dealt. He then looked at Midnight's direction and had to raise an eyebrow as he the 18 plus hero was blushing profusely and was looking at him from head to toe. All the while covering her nose as a blood tried to escape her fingers. Curious, he looked down and went wide-eyed when he saw that the top of his PE uniform was now burnt and torn up. His upper body was exposed and his six-pack abs are now free for the world to see. He looked at the pro hero and thought to humor the older lady. Like what you see. He asked in a husky voice that unintentionally came out of his mouth. Midnight began nodding slowly before saying, yes, mommy likes. She said that while breathing hard as a blush covered her cheeks. Well too bad. 
he said as he used disguise to make himself another PE uniform, earning a groan not only coming from the pro, but also from the entire stadium, most of the female audience. He chuckled and stick his tongue out to midnight in a childish way, making the pro hero pout while grumbling, Mimi. He laughed and began to walk away, not without hearing a congratulations. From his teacher. But the swift thank you, he exited the ring and went to the exit as Cementus used his quirk to repair the ring. As he walked into the stadium hall, he passed by a certain ash blonde boy who was glaring daggers at him. He just ignored the glare and walked past him. But before completely passing him he stopped directly on his side. Don't lose now, Kitsuki. I still have a bone to pick with you. He said as he walked past him. Leaving a seething Kitsuki who stomped his way towards the arena. Izuku began to walk towards his waiting area when he failed to see royal blue eyes looking at him with curiosity and admiration. Chapter 20. The Rematch. There was an awkward silence in the crowd. The last match of the semi-finals of the sports festival and the match if you can call it that was quite a sight to be seen. Izuku Midoriya sat in the waiting area, looking at the screen of the television. He like the crowd was shocked on what happened in the match between Kitsuki and Shinso. Flashback, 25 minutes ago, as the crowd's cheers echo in the stadium, excited for the next match after an epic showdown between Midoriya and Todoroki. They began debating to each other on who will win the next match. Most of them think that the explosive boy, Kitsuki Bakugo, will be the one to fight Izuku. Even though they don't know his quirk, a decent number of people wants Hitashi Shinso to win as he was an underdog in the match. Both competitors walked up to the field and faced each other. Bakugo the sunshine himself was in his usual constipated scowl, glaring daggers at the sleep-deprived boy that is Shinso. Said purple-haired boy was looking the blonde boy in front of him with scrutiny. He had been curious on why the boy had been like this. Bakugo was from his observations was arrogant, impulsive and short-tempered. And for some reason, the blonde has a grudge against his teammate in the cavalry battle, Izuku. Shinso was confused. Izuku was a nice guy, smart and had the humility that the blonde lacks. In the short time he had been with the Greenet, he saw how caring the boy is and how he is always five steps ahead when planning. Overall, Midoriya was a good person. Hero material. So why does Bakugo acts extra aggressive towards him? Whatever that reason is, Shinso was going to find out. One way or another. Bakugo to his own devices was glaring deadly at his opponent. But the reason was not because of the boy in front of him. No. He was angry at Deku. He was angry at the one who screwed his chance to be the only student in that shitty middle school to get into UA. The one who hid the fact that he had a quirk all this time. The one who has the audacity to talk fight back to him when he was formerly a wimp who can't even do things right. The one who beat him via fluke in the battle trials. The one who outran and outsmarted him in the first two rounds of the sports festival. And finally, the one that has the balls to warn him to not lose because he still has a bone to pick with him. Like hell he'd lose to an eraser head copycat when it comes to tiredness and eye bags. He's the best, he won't lose to a nobody who isn't even in the hero course. As midnight gives the signal to start, Bakugo was about to blast his way towards Shinso when said boy began talking. For someone who's supposed to be training to be a hero, you sure act like a villain. Shinso said in a bland tone. He smirked inwardly when he saw Bakugo's scowl deepen. Hook, line. The buck did you cal Bakugo was cut off when he was caught in the sleep-deprived boy's brainwashing. And sinker. Shinso let his smirk show as he walked forward the blonde boy who froze up in a trance. The crowd began to cheer, and some of the class 1A began yelling at Bakugo to no avail. They just accepted Bakugo's fate when they saw Shinso walk towards the dazed boy. They were then confused when instead of pushing Bakugo outside the ring, he stopped a few feet in front of him. Since you're under my quirk, answer me honestly, Shinso started which made the crowd grew curious, even the loudest hero was uncharacteristically quiet. Why do you always act hostile when it comes to Midoriya? Izuku in the waiting area was shocked when Shinso had asked this question. He didn't know why would Shinso ask that question. They'd just become teammates a while ago, but he didn't expect the purple-haired boy to be curious about Bakugo's way of treating him. Though still shocked, he just looked at the television and waited for Bakugo's answer. He was also curious and want to know. He didn't need to wait any longer when Bakugo began speaking. Because I hate him. He said in a robotic tone, a clear indication that he is being under the boy's quirk. Shinso was not having it though. So he asked him another question. Why do you hate him? Midoriya is a nice guy. Deku was supposed to be behind me. He was supposed to be a pebble in my way. He was nothing but a snot-nosed wimp who can't even do anything right and believes he can be a hero when he was quirkless. This caused a lot of wide eyes from the crowd. Who would have thought that the strongest student in the first year classes was once quirkless? As Shinso was going to ask him another question, Bakugo continued. That's why I did everything to show him how weak he is. How he can't be a hero, that only the strongest can be a hero. Shinso narrowed their eyes at this statement. How did you show him that he is weak? 
he asked the blonde. Though he had an idea on how the explosive teen had treated a quirkless boy such as Izuku. I bullied, made fun, and sometimes attacked him so that he would think twice on becoming a hero. The stadium was filled with gasps and murmurs. In the Bakugo household, Mitsuki Bakugo, Katsuki's mother was sobbing loudly on her husband. She was ashamed on how Katsuki had become. She tried her best to make sure her son was raised properly, but her son's actions and on what he just said explained it all. She was Inko's friend, and knowing that her son was tormenting Izuku for fun, made her afraid on what Inko would do to Katsuki. Last time Inko got angry, she used her quirk, attraction of small objects, to move someone else's nerves to paralyze that person. That didn't really went good for Hisashi. Though it did made him fall for Inko even more. What a masochist. Masaru was doing his best to calm his wife down. Though he has a calm face, deep inside he was disappointed on himself and on Katsuki. He berated himself for not manning up on scolding his son and just let his wife do it for him. Looking back at the screen, he frowned when the camera focused on his son. Maybe it's time for him to knock some sense out of his son. In the Midoriya residence, Inko was not having it any better. She knew that Izuku was being bullied and was trying her best to make it up for the boy by supporting him on what he wants. But hearing it from her son's tormentor broke her heart in more way than one. She was going to apologize to her son when he came home today. Izuku, I'm sorry. I hope I can make it up to you she whispered to herself before passing out of dehydration. Shinso stared at the blonde and gritted his teeth. He knew damn well how it felt to be bullied and made fun of because of something you can't control. Instead of releasing the blonde from his quirk or ordering him to hurt himself, Hitashi ran straight to him and punched the dazed Bakugo in the cheek, knocking the blonde to the ground. Itsuki was released from Shinso's quirk and clenched his bruised cheek. My cheek hurt his buck. What happened? His eyes grew wide when he remembered what happened and quickly gave Shinso a glare, but was surprised when he saw the boy looking down at him with a hate-filled glare. As he was going to talk to the purple-haired boy, said boy turned away from him and walked towards the outside of the ring. Before Shinso could step outside the ring, he looked back at the still-shocked Bakugo. He glared at the blonde as he said. The thing I said to you at the start of the round was supposed to be me baiting you to get mad, he paused and took a step outside the ring. But after what you just confessed, I believe that what I said was right villain. He said in walking out of the ring. There was long silence before midnight called the match. Shinso is out of bounds. Winner, Katsuki Bakugo. She said as she points her whip on Bakugo's direction without even looking at him. Bakugo after getting over his shock slowly stood up and looked around. Everyone's eyes are on him and the look on their eyes explained what he had just confessed. They all have varying looks, but the most common are anger, disgust and disappointment. The heroes looked at the blonde boy with disgust. Some whispering to each other and the others were proudly booing the blonde. Bakugo sneered and walked away. He had just got exposed and it was himself who spilled it all, even though he was forced to confess. As he walked away, his thoughts was drawn to the source of all of this and gritted his teeth. Eku. Flashback end. Class 1A and Class 1B were shocked at the revelation. They looked at Bakugo with a mixture of shock, anger and disgust. They know Bakugo was an asshole, but learning he bullied Izuku out of fun was downright unacceptable or unmanly, as Kirishima and Tetsutetsu would say. The girls of both classes and Mei were glaring daggers at the blonde boy. They didn't really like the boy at first meeting him, but he learning that the boy would torment someone just for being quirkless, they couldn't help but wish for the, the boy to be obliterated by Izuku. Surprisingly out of everyone in the group, it was Jiro who was glaring death at the boy. She knew well how it feels to be bullied and hated bullies. That's why he always distanced himself from Bakugo, but learning that he torments someone for being quirkless. She wished that Izuku would do everything to break the bastard, maybe use his brawlers to knock the blonde's teeth out of his mouth. Every girl in class 1A, some girls in class 1B and surprisingly Mei was thinking of the same thing. No one messes with my Izuku and gets away with it. They thought and blink once and twice, before blushing wildly. They suddenly looked at each other and saw that they all have the same expressions. They then glared at each other. His mind, back off. The boys of each class and a newly arrived Shinso saw this. They looked at each other and sighed. Simps. They all thought simultaneously. And prayed that Izuku would survive such troublesome women. Waiting room, the Chuizuku sneezed as a shiver can felt in his spine. Why do I feel that I'm about to encounter some troublesome women? He shrugged the feeling off. Probably nothing important. He then began to think on what just happened. Okay, Shinso exposed Bakugo and had punched him on the face, called him a villain. Now he is being glared at by the rest all of the people in the arena. Bakugo then had a look they says that he is going to kill someone. He summarized and had to groan. And since I'm fighting him next, he'll be putting all the frustration out on me. He sighed and cursed Shinso. He began thinking of a way to beat Katsuki. He thought that he can use his strategy against Todoroki. Erase his quirk and beat his ass into oblivion. Knock the blonde out and win the sports festival easy. But that didn't sit well to him. 
For some reason, he thought of the real reason he wanted to be a hero. He always wanted to prove himself that he is capable on becoming a hero. That he can keep up with Katsuki, the best student in their middle school class. Izuku wanted to be a hero to prove everyone wrong to prove that he too. Yes, Izuku Midoriya you can be a hero Alex's voice echoed in his mind, and he had smiled. That's right. Alex Mercer was the very first person to acknowledge his dream and believe in him. He was the one that gave Izuku the blacklight virus now turned quirk. Izuku can never be more thankful for the support his past self had in him. Hearing his cue to go to the field, Izuku stood up and walked to the door. As he was going to open it, he stopped and took a calming breath. He would make sure to win the match, to prove and show the world, especially Bakugo that he had grown, and he is no longer the Deku he liked to push around. He exited the door and made his way to the stadium. Izuku still had a match to win and a rabbit dog to leash. Ladies and gentlemen we commenced to the first and last match of the finals and sports festival. Are you all ready present Mick said yelled, earning a groan from Eraser head and a loud roar of cheers from the crowd. Without further ado, let me introduce to you the combatants. Explosion and destruction when he is the one in the field, though he has a controversial confession made in the previous round, he seeks to win and dominate the final match. From the hero course, class 1 AS King of Explosions Katsuki Bakugo as present Mick said that the cheers from the crowd was non-existent. Bakugo who walked towards the ring was scowling and sneering at the lack of cheers coming from the crowd. It didn't really made him feel any better when he looked at his class, most of them just glared at him, and some just looked away, even Kirishima. Tough crowd now facing him, the student that made an explosive comeback to capture the first place in the obstacle race. The person who took the pressure of the 10 million points, outsmarted everyone in the end and came out on top. The one who was able to withstand every single opponent he come across. From the hero course, please welcome master manipulator and strategist of class 1A, Izuku Midori Ayamik yelled earning a loud cheer from the crowd, heroes and civilians alike. Izuku had to stop a sweat drop from the ridiculous nickname present Mick had given him, but would admit that it sound intimidating. As he looked around the crowd, he saw his classmates, the other class and some heroes cheering for him. He stopped a verge to tear up from all the support he was getting. It was really heartwarming. To show that gratitude, he did the only thing to he can do for them. He just smiled and waved, boys. Smile and wave. Doing so, he almost tripped when he heard someone in the crowd yell, marry me, he mentally berated Todoroki for burning his PE uniform in the last match. Now he was in the sights of most of the female crowd in the arena. As he reached his side of the ring, he looked at the direction of his opponent and saw the snarling face of Bakugo. He was taken aback from this and was somewhat confused. What did he do to get such a look of hate from the blonde? This is all your fault, Deku Bakugo sneered as small pops appear on his sweaty hands still glaring daggers at the green at. This caused an eyebrow raise from Izuku. And how is it my fault actually? He asked curiosity and sassiness can be heard in the blacklight user's voice. You told the hypno reject to expose me in front of the crowd, Bakugo yelled as he was about to lunge at the confused Deku, said boy interrupted him. What? Izuku is genuinely confused at the accusation. Don't play dumb with me you shitty nerd you two planned it all so that I would look bad in front of the whole Japan you bastard want to sabotage my chance on becoming the number one he, he was cut off by a fuming Izuku who had heard enough. Listen here, you arrogant prick it wasn't my fault you got baited by Shinso, it was you who can't keep your damn temper to yourself. Also what do you mean we planned it all? We haven't even talked to each other right after the cavalry battle since Todoroki talked to me privately, and for your information, I won't sabotage you in front of a crowd. Why would I wait until the finals of the sports festival? If I wanted to sabotage you I would have done it in the cavalry battle when I take every headband you had he said to the blonde who was shocked but still had the glare on his face. Izuku sighed. There was nothing helping to get the information in the hollow coconut of the blonde's neck called ahead. Izuku calmed down and just stood there waiting for the signal to start. Bakugo mirrored the action, but with a still angered expression. Midnight looked at the competitors and said, are both combatants ready? Izuku nodded while Bakugo scowled, just start match already. Ignoring the blonde's answer, she raised her whip, for the finals of the sports festival, Izuku Midoriya vs Katsuki Bakugo start. As Midnight lowered her whip, Katsuki propelled himself in an impressive show of speed. Clearly not wasting any time. He propelled towards Izuku. The stronger the quirk. Bakugo started still propelling. The more imprecise the attack is as he was about a feet away from the green-haired boy, who began charging straight to him as well with tendrils covering his arms, Bakugo used his left hand to release an explosion to propel him to the side. This action surprised Izuku. Katsuki then flipped above him and grabbed a fistful of his green hair in his right hand and threw him across the ring. Izuku was lifted in the air by the ash blonde teen, but used the momentum to his advantage. As he was about to be thrown across the field, he used his tendrils onto the blonde's right arm and used the momentum to rotate his body. 
Doing so, Izuku used Mineta's quirk on the soles of his feet and stuck himself on the blonde's torso and reversed a throw, sending the blonde flying to the side. Bakugo was surprised and was enraged when his attack was reversed. He clicked his tongue and used his explosion to stop himself from going out of the ring. Bakugo landed on his feet and as he did, he propelled himself towards Izuku who began charging at him as well. As they neared each other Katsuki cocked his right arm on a punching position. Izuku saw it and prepared to block the attack. He waited for the attack to hit, only for the blonde to repeat the same move he did earlier. The difference was Katsuki attacked him on the face. Knowing that the eyes are one of the main weak points of the human body. This caused Izuku to wince on the bright light his explosion had caused. Ignoring the gasps from the crowd, he then attacked Izuku on the gut. Using a bigger explosion this time, he sent the green at flying across the arena. The feral grin appeared on Bakugo's face as Izuku landed on a loud thud, landing on his back. How'd you like that, you shitty nerd? Expecting Izuku to slowly stand up, he flew upwards Izuku as he charged at the down teen. Thanks to shock absorption, Izuku stood up quickly. He can see Deku's right arm getting enveloped by black tendrils as his whip fist was formed, and he looked straight at the airborne boy. Erasure activated, cancelling the explosions on the blonde's palms. He used his whip fist as a hook, and it latched on the blonde's shirt in a tight grip. That over here he said in a dark tone as he pulled the blonde towards him and gave the blonde a sick right hook on the face. Sending Bakugo tumbling to the ground. Izuku deactivated Erasure by blinking. He charged at Bakugo who had just stood up and engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat as he changed his whip fist into his musclemus. As he sent punches at Bakugo, Kitsuki began countering with explosive punches at the greenet. However, the close range that he is in right now was not helping his case as Deku was not only strong, but also fast. And getting hit by a strong fast punch hurts. It was angering the blonde even more. He wouldn't admit it, but he was clearly outmatched. That's what he thought when he was once again sent flying as Izuku sent a punch to his gut. He landed on his feet, but staggered a bit when he felt the pain on his gut. He glared at the Izuku, who didn't even look hurt after all his explosive punches. This angered him even more. How is Deku keeping up with him and just looked unfazed at his attacks? His questions was not answered when Izuku began charging at him with his green eyes, now turned red and hair floating. Erasure Katsuki thought as he tried to use his quirk, failing miserably. Izuku then sent him a barrage of punches and kicks, making the blonde block his attacks and backing up to avoid his attacks. When a kick made Katsuki fall down on his face, he grabbed a fistful of grinded concrete caused by his explosions and chucked it at the greenet's eyes. Izuku yelped at the attack and staggered back, blinking his eyes. This caused Erasure to be deactivated, Bakugo used this opportunity to charge up a strong explosion and sent it towards the still wincing Izuku. I he yelled as the explosion covered Izuku. He gained a sinister smile on his face and began laughing maniacally. Is that all you got, Deku? I thought you said that you were going to surpass me. Your still pathity was cut off when a tendril was launched at his direction and he barely evading it. Itsuki grunted and looked back at Izuku, who still had his left hand on his eye. Still rubbing the hurt eye. Using dirty tactics. Not really heroic, Katsuki Izuku said, removing his hand on his eyes. Then again, nothing about you is heroic. As he said that Katsuki released an explosion on his palms, mirroring how angry he is right now. You bastard how would you know if I'm not heroic? You don't know shit he yelled at the green-haired boy as he propelled towards his former friend. I'm the best example of what a hero is supposed to be. As he neared Izuku, he didn't see the scowls on the faces of every single hero in the stadium. Izuku stood straight and sent a look on the approaching blonde. He said nothing as he let the blonde flew towards him. Izuku noticed Katsuki as he began using his palms to descent explosions on different directions and saw how he was spinning. So this is his strongest move. He thought as he began channeling black light on his arms. Oh it's her the blonde started as his palms began to glow. Impact yelled out as a large explosion engulfed the arena. The onlookers had to cover their eyes as the bright explosion shined in the field. Katsuki landed on his knees, exhausted on the last attack he had just pulled off. That was his strongest attack, and there is no way in hell Deku was going to serve Man, that was close. A feeling of deja vu hit Katsuki as he slowly looked at the direction of the voice and had paled when he saw a very familiar sight. In front of him was Izuku was covered by a large shield. However, it was different from the last one he used in the battle trial. This one is larger, bulkier and has spiked protrusions surrounding it. Still using flashy attacks to make it look strong. You never change, Bakugo. Izuku said as he retracted the shield back to his body. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. He said in a serious voice. Izuku noticed the blonde was breathing heavily and was on his knees. You should probably give up now, Kitsuki. You're at your limit. He said as he took a step forward. He was however stopped when Kitsuki gave him a glare. 
Shut the buck up and stop looking down on me he yelled at Izuku, shakily standing up. You see that's you problem Izuku snapped at him. You always think that every single person that wants to help you or give you advice is always looking down on you. What kind of bullshit of a mince it is that to those who are hearing this can feel the annoyance in the greenet's voice. You always feel like you're the main character, the focus, the star of the show, just because you got praised for having a strong quirk, Izuku was glaring daggers at the blonde who didn't even look phased by the glare. And to think that I want to be someone like you with confidence and a strong will. In order to be like you, I tried to be a hero. This caused a lot of wide eyes in the stadium. Bakugo looked at Izuku with a surprised look. I always wanted to be a hero not only because I wanted to help people with a smile like All Might to prove myself that I too can keep up with you, he looked down for a bit and looked back at Kitsuki. But seeing how you act and think highly of yourself and always assume that others look down on you when they try to help you. I came with the conclusion that I will no longer keep up with you. He said as his arm was surrounded by biomass and transformed into his musclemus as he assumed a stance. Instead I will be surpassing you he charged at the teen, who was surprised at his sheer speed and tried to attack him only to find his quirk being erased. A punch then landed on his face. He staggered back, but as he was about to recover another punch landed on his gut. Kitsuki tried to punch back, but his hits weren't affecting Izuku, even in his full force. As the beating continued, Kitsuki was now in wobbly feet and had trouble staying up. Izuku looked at the boy and deactivated erasure and blacklight. Calmly, he walked towards the staggering blonde who slowly raised both his hands. As Bakugo was about to use his quirk, two strong arms grabbed his outstretched arms. Bakugo looked at the direction of the arms, he paled when he saw two brawlers growling at him. As he was about to break free, when he looked up and saw Izuku in the air. Before he knew it, Izuku had performed an axe kick on his head. He began falling down, slowly losing consciousness. Before blacking out, he heard Deku's voice. Congratulations Bakugo, you have become someone I can actually look down upon. Izuku said as the blonde teen was now knocked out, bloodied and bruised. Izuku looked at his hands, now covered with Katsuki's blood. He thought of consuming it, but decided against it. It was bad that he took Todoroki's blood and looked over his memories without permission. He wouldn't do it to Bakugo, no matter how big of an asshole he was yet. He was snapped out of his trance when he heard Midnight's voice. Bakugo is unconscious. The winner of the sports festival, Izuku Midori a loud cheers, explosion, confetti and claps can be heard throughout the stadium. Izuku looked around and smiled at the sight of his friends minus Iida, since his gone for some reason giving him smile, claps, cheers and a standing ovation. He then looked over class 1B and saw they were doing the same thing. Looking closely, he saw Monoma still tied by his tendrils. He completely forgot that he had tied him up. He then looked around and saw heroes giving him smiles, claps and thumbs ups. Feeling thankful for the support and cheers, he did the first thing that came to his mind. He raised his fist in the air while yelling from the top of his lungs, a cry of success. This earned him a loud round of applause and cheers. Somewhere in the streets of Yokohama, a petite girl with inward slitted yellow eyes that resembles a cat, with pale, dirty ash blonde color hair and messy buns, wearing a plain sifuku with a kansai collar, both the skirt and the shirt dark blue with a double white trim, which is paired with a red scarf that she ties loosely below. Over this, she wears an oversized beige cardigan with a rather long hem and cuffs, and pockets on either side, the right one shown to hold a number of trinkets on either a keychain or a cell phone strap. She sports knee-length black socks and dark brown dress shoes with thick heels. She was looking over a television screen in a television store that is currently showing UA's sports festival. Specifically, she was looking over a certain green-haired boy with four symmetrically arranged freckles in a diamond shape with wide eyes. If you look closely, you can see tear forming in her slitted eyes, as she watches Zuku being given a gold medal by the symbol of peace himself. She stared at the greenet as the tears in her eyes had streamed down on her cheeks. She kept her eyes on Izuku as she said. Sato. Chapter 21. Offers and Hero Names. In Class 1A, we see our green-haired protagonist enter the empty room and walk towards his seat. He sat down with on his chair with a hard thud as sweat dripped down his chin. To say Izuku was tired was an understatement. As he sat down and placed his head on his desk, Izuku could only think of one thing right now. Fangirls are scary. Flashback, an hour ago, it's early in the morning and Izuku had already outside on his school uniform. It had been three days since the sports festival, and it had drastically changed Midoriya's life. For example, most of his classmates who used to tease him back in middle school apologized to him. Some of the girls in his former class began hitting on him after they saw how billed he was in the sports festival. As a kind soul he is, he forgiven them since they didn't really made any great impact on his middle school days. Though he had to use blacklight to escape the girls trying to hit on him. Exiting the train, he began walking a distance towards the direction of UA. Izuku had always liked walking to UA after exiting the train in the early morning. 
He find it quite relaxing to wander the streets, feeling the cold breeze of the early morning as the sun slowly illuminated the surroundings. What made it even more relaxing is the fact that not many people are out at this time of day. As his eyes wander around the streets, he failed to notice a figure bumping on him as he walked past a corner. Izuku found himself landing down on his butt. I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. Said the person who bumped into him or he bumped into. Looking up, Izuku had to widen his eyes. What are the chances that he bumped on Kamui Woods? He is a man with a rather muscular build, standing relatively shorter than other high-ranked pro heroes. He is wearing his hero costume that consists of a dark blue bodysuit that includes a wooden belt, wooden knee pads, and wooden shoes. A small bundle of roses hangs from the left side of his belt. Are you okay? The pro said as he reached down his hand to Izuku. Izuku was cut off his reverie and quickly to the man's outstretched hand, pulling him up. As Izuku stood up, he thanked the man and dusted his pants. Amui Wood stared at Izuku, studying the boy. Squinting his eyes until he realized who the boy is. Wait you're the kid who won the sports festival Izuku Midoriya, right? The wooden hero said as he pointed at Izuku who blinked at at his statement. Uh? Oh yeah that's me. You were watching the sports festival. Izuku asked a pro who chuckled a bit. Not the whole thing, but yeah. Not only me, every hero was watching the sports festival. You did great, kid. I saw how you demolished the whole competition. Kamui praised the boy who got a tint of red on his freckled cheeks. Izuku smiled and rubbed the back of his head. Thank you Mr. Woods. The pro shook his head. Please you don't need to call me Mr. Just call me Kamui Woods since we'll be working in the field in the future. No need for formalities. The man waved him off. They conversed for a bit as they walked the streets of Mustafu. Too caught up by their conversation, they failed to notice a girl near a group of girls looking at the two. The girls saw the two males and quickly recognized them. She looked at her companions and yelled. Girls isn't that Kamui Woods and the boy who won the sports festival. The loud voice made Izuku and Kamui Woods turn around. Seeing the crowd, the pro hero suddenly flinched making Izuku look at the man in confusion. Oh my god it's Kamui Woods, is so cool, his costume is so awesome, shit. Fangirls. The pro whispered in fear taking a step back. Izuku tilted his head. Fangirls. I know he has fans, but why is he scared? How bad can fangirls be? He thought to himself, looking at the group of girls who were now looking at him. Wait isn't that the boy in the sports festival? You mean the one who beat the kid with explosion? Is taller than expected, not wanting to be rude, he smiled at the crowd. Only to regret his decision. Oh my god is so cutie, I want to squish his cheeks, did you see his ABS? His built like a Greek god, I want to grate some cheese on his ABS. Hearing the comment about his abs, he paled. They were that bad. Like Kamui Woods, Izuku took a step back. The crowd were now looking at Izuku and Kamui Woods with hearts in their eyes. When the two saw them take a step forward, Izuku was sure that the ground shook a bit. As the crowd took another step, he looked at the pro hero. Wanting to avoid the flock of fangirls who looked like a pack hyenas stalking the two males. You um, Mr. Woods. Izuku stuttered nervously. P permission to use quirk. Hearing his question, Kamui Woods reached for his pocket and took a card. He then shakily gave it to Izuku, who took a glance at the card and had to suppress his jaw from dropping. On his hand was an quirk permission anti-fangirl card. He saw at the bottom of the card says, if you don't want fangirls, run all caps. After putting the card in his pocket. He looked at the man and nodded at each other. And as if they practiced it, they fist bumped and said, I'll see you on the other side. Don't die, brother. All in complete synergy. But that they both activated their quirks and booked it out of there. Izuku running, wall running and gliding, while Kamui Woods used his quirk. Arbor to latch onto posts and buildings to swing around like a certain comic book superhero, as the rabid fangirls chased them throughout the streets. Flashback end, Izuku snapped out of his thoughts when a hand landed on his shoulder. Surprised at the contact, Izuku flinched and jumped from his seat. Literally. He jumped and unconscious used wall curling to stick on the classroom ceiling. Izuku then looked at the owner of the hand and saw Ida, blinking owlishly at his reaction before earning a serious look. Midoriya, get down this instant. This is not the time for hanging around. Iida scolded Izuku as he chopped the air with his hand. Midoriya sighed in relief. He stopped channeling blacklight on his hands and let himself fall down the floor. Jeez Iida. Don't need to surprise me like that. He said as he leaned on his desk facing the tall boy. I apologize for scaring you, Midoriya. It's just that I have been calling you for five minutes and you didn't answer me, so I got worried. The engine user said. Oh sorry, just thinking about something that happened today that I wish never happens again. Izuku said as he remembered the fangirls and shivered. Was it that bad? Iida asked in a worried tone. You have no idea. Izuku grumbled as he sighed. He looked at his friends as he recalled something that he read in the news in his phone. I saw what happened in the news. How are you holding up? 
The sudden question made Iida flinch back as he slowly looked at Izuku who was looking at him intently. Instead of answering, Iida just looked away and lowered his head with a serious look on his face, completely ignoring Izuku's question. Seeing that his question was being ignored, Izuku just sighed in defeat and shook his head. I understand that you don't want to talk about it, and I respect that. Just, don't forget that you are not alone in this world Iida. You have friends who care for you. Izuku said as he looked at the taller boy who was still not looking at him. Sighing, he continued. I know you're in rage on what Stain had done to your brother. But please Iida. Don't do anything reckless. The last thing we want right now is another Iida in the hospital. He said as Iida nodded his head, this time looking at Izuku. Iida nodded and bowed at him, I appreciate your concern, Midoriya. But you don't have to worry. I won't be doing anything that I for sure will regret in the end of the day. He said as he excused himself to go to his seat. Looking at the retreating form of his friend, Izuku inwardly frowned. You can smile all you want, Iida. But you're not fooling me. He thought as he took a seat and placed his head over his forearms. He planned on taking a nap before the class starts, and seeing that it was still early, it was perfect since the chase from the fangirls earlier. He shivered on the thoughts of crazed women chasing him. If only he had something to repel those troublesome women. But what? Or who? At that moment, the girls from class 1A and 1B and other women pro hero or not sneezed simultaneously. Well, enough of that. Izuku needs to take a nap. After a solid 27 minutes of nap time, Izuku's eyes began to slowly flutter as he heard noises coming from around him. He shifted his head and turned to his right side and slowly opened his eyes. As he opened his eyes, he noticed that most of their classmates are now in the class and are talking to each other. Izuku was confused though, why are all of the girls sitting or leaning near his seat? Shaking off his confusing, he locked eyes with the first person he saw. He can see her staring at him with wide eyes and a tint of pink brushing on her cheeks. Izuku smiled at this cute gesture and greeted her. Good morning Jiro. He said in a soft yet husky voice, which happened unintentionally. This made the girl turn red as her earphone jacks wrinkles. Them morning, is Midoriya. She said shyly as she twirled her finger on her earphone jack. Looking away at him to save her from her embarrassing blushing face. Come on, Kaioka he just greeted you no need to be so flustered about it. Izuku chuckled at his and slowly pushed himself to lean on his seat. The other girl saw this and greeted him. He smiled at them as he did a bit of stretching to crack some stiff joints. He looked at the time and saw that they still have a couple of more minutes before homeroom classes start. By the way. Did you guys got surrounded by people today on your way to school? Mina asked her friends. Asking you questions like, you're that student from the sports festival, right? A lot of them talked to me on my way here. She enthusiastically said as she pointed herself. Me too. Kirishima said with the same enthusiasm as his pink-haired friend. People were staring at me as well, but it was kinda embarrassing. Toru said as she shifted in her place. Isn't that normal for you, Hagaker? Ajiro whispered as a sweat drop formed on his head. A lot of middle schoolers keep saying don't mind it to me, Siro said he slumped on his chair, a depressing aura visible around him. Don't mind it. Sai said unintentionally mocking Siro. Said boy just screamed in agony as he slammed his head on the desk, making most of the class laugh. Izuku patted the tape user's back, trying to comfort the now depressed boy. And just one day after and we've suddenly been thrust into the spotlight. He sighed in relief. Yue is the best. Izuku chuckled at Kaminari's antics. He was really enjoying his stay in Yue. Well, they all were. How about you, Midori? Did people talk to you on your way here? Mina asked the class president, who visible paled as he became in thought. Yeah they did and I hate it already. He said as he rubbed his face with his palms. He didn't really want to remember the incident, but they had to ask. Huh? How so, Izuku? Achako asked as she tilted her head. Mina, Sayu and Toru mimicking the gesture. Izuku looked away and said in a blunt voice. Two words. Fangirls. As soon as he said those words, the some of them were laughing at his misfortune, some were paling at Izuku's experience, Kaminari was slightly jealous, and the girls were frowning, in both jealousy and overprotectiveness. Almost time for homeroom, Izuku ordered his classmates to go to back their seats to wait for Mr. Izawa. As Izuku was ordering his classmates what to do, Katsuki Bakugo could only glare at the greenet. As much as he want to smash the bastard's nose, he won't or should I say can't. Why? Well, right after the finals ended and Bakugo woke up from unconsciousness. He was angry at what Izuku had said and did to him. He just got bodied by a person who just got his quirk just a year ago and made him look like a grade schooler on how he was manhandled by Deku. But what pisses him off is that when he woke up, he was met with Azawa's deadly glare and had told him that he was close to expelling him. If not for his massive potential to be a great hero. That's why the pro gave an alternate solution. Azawa said that Bakugo would be required to attend anger management and quirk counseling sessions with Hound Dog. 
He was also set to wear quirk suppressing cuffs at all times. If failed to do these will result on his expulsion. Itsuki agreed on this, albeit reluctantly. Shortly after that he went home with the cuffs on his wrists. He stared at his wrists and growled. It took him two minutes of glaring at his wrists before looking at the window, spacing out. Just because he had to wear these shit for bracelets to avoid the risk of expulsion doesn't mean he had to like it. His train of thought was interrupted when Azawa entered the room. Good morning. Came the monotone voice of their homeroom teacher. He entered the class in his usual slouch as he is now free of the bandages. Though, a scar can be seen just under his right eye. As the class greeted back, Sayu croaked, tilting her head to the side. Mr. Azawa, it's good to see you out of you bandages. Kiro. She said. Azawa sighed. That old coot went overboard in the healing process. He referred to recovery girl as the old coot. Scratching his cheek with his pinky finger. Anyway, before we start I would like to introduce you guys to someone. He turned towards the door and called out, you can come in now. The whole class turned to the direction of the door and saw someone enter the room. Most of them went wide-eyed, while some just glared at the person who just entered. Said person walked to the front of the class and introduced himself. I'm Hitashi Shinso. Nice to meet you all. He said in a monotone, mimicking the eraser head as he bowed slightly. Which didn't went unnoticed to Todoroki who narrowed his eyes. Mr. Izawa's secret love child. He thought as he wrote the information in his notepad. Shinso will be joining our who will be part of this class from now on. Hope you all get along. He then looked at Shinso. Your seat is behind Midoriya. Shinso nodded and walked towards his seat, ignoring the glares Bakugo was giving him. When he passed Midoriya, the green-haired boy smirked at his and raised his fist. Welcome to the class Shin. The indigo-haired boy smirked back and bumped fist with the green-haired boy. Thanks Mido. He said as he took his seat behind the class president. Azawa grunted, now that that's taken care of. Let's start. Today we will be doing a special hero informatics class. This made the atmosphere of the class turn tensed. Some of the class began gritting their teeth and began imagining what their teacher mean. Ah man, hero and law. I suck at those subjects. The spiky red head thought as a bead of sweat rolled down his cheek. Special. Shit, please don't be a pop quiz, Kaminari said as he shuffled anxiously in his seat with fingers crossed. Azawa looked at the tensed atmosphere and had to suppress a smirk as he saw his class's reactions. They never failed to amuse him. Code names. You'll be choosing your hero names. He informed the class. And just that, the whole class erupted in excitement. Alright, annoyed of the loud voices, he activated his quirk to which made the class fall silent. Settle down. Before we get to that, we have to go over the scouting reports that we collected from the sports festival. He paused to take out one sheet of paper before continuing. These offers will determine which pros you will be working with out in the field of heroics. They saw potential in you and want you to grow. But, I should remind you this interest they have in you can easily slip away, that's why act accordingly and no funny business, he said as he glared at Bakugo and Kaminari, respectively. Bakugo just scoffed at this, while Kaminari simply looked away. Anyway, these are the results of the reports. Some of you had captured the most attention. The screen appeared on the board, and Class 1A looked up to the screen. Todoroki. 4123. Midoriya. 4122. Bakugo. 3245. Okoyami. 360. Beida. 375. Hamanari. 272. Aoirozu. 216. Hiroshima. 129. Siro. 40. With some people complaining that they didn't get offers, some were ecstatic that there are pros that saw potential in them. Izuku blinked in surprise on the absurd amount of internship offers he got. He was one offer away from tying with Todoroki. And again it's probably Endeavor who didn't want him as an intern. Azawa coughed to get the class's attention. Most of those who got offers are offered to those who got to the last round of the sports festival. Don't worry, it doesn't mean that you didn't get any offers doesn't necessary says that you don't get to do your internships. Which reminds me his head turned to Shinso. Since you just got in the hero course, you will be staying with me for remedial studies and training focusing on hero studies. The sleep-deprived pro said to the sleep-deprived hero course newbie, who gave a nod of understanding. Now, about you hero names. They are far more important than you probably think. Well you can change them before graduating, if you don't choose something appropriate, then there will be hell to pay everyone turn to see the R-rated hero. Midnight make her way into the classroom. The names that you pick today are what the entire world could call you for the rest of your life. It'd be best if what you chose is something that suits you. As Midnight was talking, Azawa began shuffling to the corner of the room. Body already halfway into his yellow sleeping bag. Midnight will be handling this part of the class. Creativity was never my forte. He said as he zipped himself and plopped down on the corner. Letting Midnight take over his class. Everyone was given a whiteboard and 15 minutes to come up with a hero name. 
At that Izuku began to think of names that would fit him and his quirk. Many name ideas came in his mind, but some of them are just meh. After thinking of a hero name that not only represents him and his quirk, but also sounds cool. Okay, maybe he just picked it because it's cool. Giving another glance on his whiteboard, he nodded in approval and placed it on his desk facing down. As the 15-minute mark came to an end, Midnight clapped her hands together. Okay, let's start presenting names starting with those who are ready. But that sentence, a wave of anxiety washed over the class as they began sweating. We're presenting this. Kirishima mentally asked as he anxiously yet manly began shaking. Mwa. Aoyama raised his hand as he stood up and walked to the podium. Man, Aoyama got guts. Sira thought. Said boy raised his board high enough for the class to see. Shining hero. I cannot stop twinkling as he said that with confidence, sparkles appeared around him. That's a whole sentence the class mentally erupted. It's easier to use if you take out the I and short it can not to can't. Midnight said as she took Aoyama's board and rewrite the hero name with a smile before showing it to him. You're right, mademoiselle. Aoyama nodded in agreement. Izuku blinked at the exchange and raised his hand, Miss Midnight. Can I say something? What is it, sweetie? I believe that Aoyama should change it. He said completely ignoring the affectionate nickname from Midnight. I think people won't take him seriously if his hero name is as ridiculous as that. Akun sans valwar t vexer, Aoyama no offense, Aoyama. Akun pris, Monsieur Midori and untaken, Mr. Midori dot Aoyama said winking at the green at. The class blinked at the exchange. Kaminari leaned towards Kirishima. What did they say? He asked the manly teen. I have no idea. If it's okay, I have a suggestion. Izuku said nervously. I think Shining Hero. Magnifique would fight your overall aesthetic. You know, since you're um French. Everyone blink even Bakugo. Izuku shifted on his seat nervously. Whoa. That's all Kirishima could say. That sounds as it says, Magnifique thank you Monsieur Midoriya. No problem. Aoyama gave Midoriya a grateful smile and took his whiteboard from Midnight's hands. He erased the words on it and wrote the name Izuku had suggested. Everyone minus Bakugo clapped it to that. Me, next call me Alien Queen Mina said enthusiastically as she showed the class her board. And I'd Midnight as said, shutting her down as she form an X with her arms. Sorry Ishido. But no. Oh man. Mina's head slumped down as an aura of depression surrounded her. That is when her eyes widened and eyebrows raised, she whipped her head and looked directly at Izuku. Said boy met her gaze and blinked when Mina smiled at him. Do you have a better name for me? She asked. Everyone had their eyes on Izuku. Uh. He said as he thought for a bit, before looking back at the pinket. He smiled and stood up. There is one that might fit for you he said as he stood up with his board in hand and walked to the front of the class. He made sure to place his board under the podium so that no one could see it. Izuku then took Mina's board and using his right hand, he wrote down the name he thought about. After writing, Izuku closed the marker and looked at Mina. I think Acid Hero. Meltdown would be a great choice. He said as he showed Mina the hero name. Said girl stared at him in awe before giving him a hug, making him blush and panic a bit. That's way cooler and more fitting for my quirk. Thanks a bunch, Midori. Alright you're welcome Mina. He said patting her back, still shocked at the close contact. However he failed to see the jealous looks from the rest of the girls and amused smirks from most of the boys. However, Mina saw the jealous glares that the girls were giving her. Being the playful girl she is, she looked at them with a smug look and stuck out her tongue, causing every single girl in the room, even Midnight to twitch. Separating from the hug, Mina revealed the her new hero name with a proud smile before going back to her seat. Izuku to his part tried to compose himself as Midnight approached him. Aren't you going back to your seat, Midoriya? He just looked at her and shook his head. No. Since I'm already here, I might as well present my hero name. Izuku said as he took his whiteboard from under the podium and placed it on top of the podium, the hero name facing Izuku. Izuku looked at the name he wrote and smiled fondly at it. He took a deep breath before looking at midnight then to the class. As I was thinking of what hero name I would be choosing, I always remember the times when I first dreamed to be a hero. As a child I always thought that a hero's alias makes is what makes them great heroes. That's why when I was younger, I would always imagine myself as a hero and would think of childish names that would always have a connection to All Might's name. He chuckled at the memory and looked back down his hero name. But after watching his videos over and over and over again, I realized that it's not the name that what makes a hero. It's not the amount of villains you beat up. It's not the amount of sidekicks you have. He paused and looked at his classmates and teachers and smiled. The way that you act selflessly in order to keep someone or something safe, even if it causes your life, is what it means to be a hero. It's how you show the people that you are a hero, that you are there with them when they need you the most, and with those actions will reflect on the name of that hero, then to the quirk of the hero. That's why I present to you, my hero name he said as he flipped his whiteboard and showed them his hero name. 
the adaptive hero. Black Watch. He said with a proud smile. I choose this hero name because I am still growing as a hero and will still keep growing, day by day. As I make my way into the field of heroism, I adapt with the surroundings, my allies and opponents. And the day before the sports exam, I found out that I can use other people's quirk whenever I consume some of their biomass or blood. He then looked at Azawa who was now looking at him. And with as surprising as it sounds, I can see the memories of the person's biomass I absorbed. Which made me think of it as a way to watch over them and make sure to also represent them whenever I use their quirk. Izuku gave Azawa a small smile, the latter smiling back. Izuku looked back at the class and scratched his head sheepishly, well, that and I thought it sounds cool. The rest of the class who was silently listening to his mini-speech. Izuku felt nervous at the silence. His nervousness was thrown out the window when he heard a clap and looked towards direction of the clap. He saw Iida looking at him with teary eyes, a smile glued on the engine user's face. Iida had been deeply and affected by the fact that his older brother, Tensei Iida aka the Turbo Hero. Ingenium was crippled by the hero killer. Stain. From the time that the sports festival ended and earlier this morning, he had planned to seek out Stain and made him pay. But hearing Izuku's point of view in becoming a hero made him backtrack on his plan on taking down the anti-hero. With a moment of thinking to himself, he realized that what he was planning was going to be an act of vigilantism and basically suicide. Not only he was going to break the law, he was going to do it for a selfish reason. An act of revenge. An act that is not what makes a hero. Looking at Midoriya, Tenya realized that Izuku was trying to help him earlier, yet he pushed him away. Just for revenge. For his brother. For Tensei. What would Tensei think of his thoughts right now? Would Tensei be proud of him if he continued his plans? No. Of course not. Tensei would be disappointed at him. His brother would not like the idea of him taking on a villain just for revenge. Aida then looked at the whiteboard on his desk with the hero name, Ingenium. He stared at it for a second and erased it. He wasn't ready and in the right state of mind to represent his brother's name. He wrote a temporary hero name and smiled at it. Not so complicated. Simple but explainable. As soon as Iida's clapping was heard, slowly everyone joined in. Everyone but one. Akugo was looking at Izuku with a thoughtful eyes, and his red eyes wandered towards his whiteboard and the hero name he had written down. Ping explosion murder. And then he looked back at Deku. Who was now tearing up and bowing at the class. His speech earlier had plagued his mind. He had always thought and believed that he was the best, and everyone around him was nothing but pebbles in his way in becoming a hero. He'd always believed that he will become number one, no matter what. Was his view of being hero wrong all this time? Was his overly aggressive approach on socializing affecting not only him but those around him? Unsure of what to do, much like Iida he erased the words written and changed it to something that immediately came in his mind that doesn't have murder in it. He sighed and flipped it over. Katsuki had a lot in his mind. Maybe this internship will help him find the real meaning of being a hero. It had been almost an hour since the start of the class and them presenting their hero names. Izuku was standing in front of the class, next to the podium. He had stayed there even after his presentation of his hero name as a helper for those who have trouble in coming up of a hero name. Most of the class had chosen the names, and Izuku was there to suggest a better name if Midnight disagrees. Though he had to admit that his classmates are creative in their names. For example. Sayu being the rainy season hero. Froppy, Kirishima as the sturdy hero. Red Riot, paying homage to his idol Crimson Riot which Izuku had to curse Todoroki for making him think that Kirishima was Crimson Riot's son and Achako being the floating hero. Uravity, a combination of her name and quirk. So far, the ones who already have their hero names are the following. Yuga Aoyama Shining Hero. Magnifique suggested by Izuku. Mina Shido Acid Hero. Meltdown suggested by Izuku. Sayu Asui Rainy Season Hero. Froppy. Achako Uraka Floating Hero. Uravity. Masher Aojiro Martial Art Hero. Whiplash suggested by Izuku. Enki Kaminari Stun Gun Hero. Chargeabled. Ajiro Kirishima Sturdy Hero. Red Riot. Oji Kota Petting Hero. Anima. Akito Sato Sweets Hero. Sweet Stack suggested by Izuku. Mizo Shoji Tentacle Hero. Tentacle. Hyokajiro Hearing Hero. Soundwave suggested by Izuku. Antasiro Taping Hero. Cellophane. Humikage Tokoyami Jet Black Hero. Tsukiyomi. Shoto Todoroki Icy Hot Hero. Frost Flare suggested by Bakugo, which Izuku enhanced. Horahagaka Refraction Hero. Prisma suggested by Izuku. Itashi Shinso Commanding Hero. Imperio. Momo Yeoi Rozu Creation Hero. Genesis suggested by Izuku. And lastly Izuku Midoriya Adaptive Hero. Black Watch. Only people left is Iida and Bakugo, who were surprisingly quiet today. Izuku was not surprised that Iida is not much of a talker today, but what made him worry was Bakugo. The blonde hadn't said a word ever since the start of the class up until the presentation. Not that he didn't like the silence, but it was kinda concerning. He didn't know what the blonde is thinking, and that's what's worrying him. 
Izuku was sent back to reality when Iida approached the podium. He stood behind it and showed the class his hero name. A speedster hero. Hermes he said with a small smile on his face. Izuku frowned and looked at the taller boy and asked, I thought you were going to use Ingenium as your hero name. Then you just looked at Izuku and smiled. I did, but after hearing your speech earlier I decided to think about it for a while, since I don't want to just use my brother's hero name like it doesn't hold anything. He explained. Izuku nodded in understanding, I see though I like the name Hermes, I think it doesn't suit you. I believe the fitting hero name for you is Impulse. Ida's brow raised. Care to elaborate. For starters, the word impulse means is a sudden strong and unreflective urge or desire to act. And you, my friend is one impulsive person in a good way that is. Izuku said and placed a hand on the taller boy's shoulder. And impulsive is one of the characteristics of what makes a hero. A selfless act with no hesitation. Iida nodded at the green net and erased the word Hermes and replaced it with impulse. Izuku nodded in satisfaction as Iida presented his new hero name Speedster Hero. Impulse. And that only left one person. The same person who had been uncharacteristically silent during the presentation. Kitsuki Bakugo. Said boy slowly stood up and walked towards the podium passing by Izuku, with whiteboard in hand. As Kitsuki stood in front of the class, he slowly turned his head towards Izuku. Who was looking back at him. The two had a small stare down before Kitsuki looked away. Flicking his tongue, Bakugo raised his board and placing it on the podium, with a silent tap. Explosive hero. Nap him. He said in a monotone, which made a couple of eyes blink owlishly. Izuku was surprised that there was no sign of murder and homicide in the hero name. Just a cleverly thought name with a pun. He chuckled lightly before it turned into a loud laugh, making the class look at him in confusion. Even Kitsuki looked at him with a slightly annoyed look. Sorry. It just that your hero name is perfect. He took a deep breath before continuing. If you think about it, it actually makes sense. An Napam causes explosions when hit on impact, and your quirk is literally an explosion. And since you use your palms to generate explosions, it would fit the name Napam. It took a solid five seconds for Kitsuki to process what Izuku said. He then growled at the greenet. Shut up. Just tell me if it's good or not. Izuku looked at Midnight, who gave him a nod, looking back at the blonde. He smiled. Approved. Izuku said as he smirk. Props for the palm pun by the way. Kitsuki just huffed and walked back to his seat. Not without whispering to Izuku. Whatever floats your boat Midoriya. Izuku stared wide-eyed at the blonde for a bit and smiled. Who would have that after 10 years, he called him by his name again. It was a start. Hopefully it stayed this way. Lunch had just ended, and Izuku is now back on his seat with stack and stack of internship offers from various hero agencies. The most notably was an offer from Mirko, Kamui Woods, Mount Lady, Edshot and someone called Lady Nagant. Izuku had been puzzled on who he should choose as a potential teammate. He couldn't think of who to choose. Izuku, are you okay? A voice came from behind, making Izuku look back. He saw Momo approaching him with a confused yet worried look on her face. Hey Momo. Yeah I'm good. Just not sure who to pick. Izuku said as he placed a piece of paper down on a stack and turned around to face her. How about you? Have you chosen which agency to intern for? He asked a taller girl. Yes. I have already chosen, but I haven't gave it to Mr. Izawa. She said as she twirled with her bang while looking at Izuku. Really? Who did you choose? Izuku asked in genuinely curiosity as he drank water. I choose Uwabami's hero agency, as soon as she ended her sentence, Izuku comically spat the water from his mouth. W what? Why would dot dot you choose her of all your other offers? Izuku said in between coughs. Momo raised her eyebrow and tilted her head. Why? Is something wrong with my choice? Izuku waved his hands frantically at the girl. What? No 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 there's nothing wrong about your choice, just caught me off guard. He said as he looked at her while scratching his cheek. I just didn't know you were into modeling. That statement got her to furrow her eyebrows. I'm not into modeling. Why would you think I was into modeling? She said in a very confused look. She didn't get what Izuku meant by into modeling. Well, for starters you are going to accept an internship offer from a hero who focuses more on modeling than doing heroics. She usually give out offers usually to girls with pretty face. Though, I'm not surprised that she offered you, you are pretty. Izuku bluntly said before turning crimson as he had just realized what he said. He putting that aside, I think you should chose a hero that will compliment you and your quirk. Since your quirk relies on lipids to use, I think Fatgum is a solid pick. Momo nodded at that. Someone who can give her pointers on using her quirk, like Fatgum. If only she had an offer from the chunky hero. Wait a minute, she had an offer from Fatgum. Her expression brightened as she lunged forward to Izuku, almost toppling the stacks of on his desk. Thanks for the advice, Izuku. You're my savior. She said as she let go and went to her desk and picked up a sheet. 
She then ran out of the room and went straight to the teacher's lounge to give her internship choice. Izuku chuckled at her antics. He didn't know Momo, despite her mature stature can be childish sometimes. Shaking those thoughts away, he looked back at the stacks of paper and picked up one of the choices he had earlier. When he had advised Momo to choose someone who can give pointers on her quirk, this offer immediately popped into his head. He read the hero agency and nodded accordingly. Stood up and walked towards the door on his way to the teacher's lounge to pass his internship offer. He wasn't really sure what to expect in the agency, but all he knows is that whatever happens he will have the time of his life. As he closed the door of the classroom, a paper fell of the stack he had just taken the offer from. Landing on the floor, it landed with its writings facing up. If you see closely you would barely see what the name of the agency is. Hero Public Safety Commission. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.